The gravity of the time is such that every new avenue of peace, no matter how dimly discernible, should be explored. Never before in history has so much hope for so many people been gathered together in a single organization. You will provide a great share of the wisdom, of the courage, and the faith which can bring to this world lasting peace for all nations and happiness and well-being for all men. So we are here today with Jim Conka, a former guest, but here to talk to us on a new topic. Jim is a trustee at the Herbert M. Parker Foundation and a prolific author on Forbes. Jim, thank you so much for coming back and welcome back. You're welcome. Thank you so much. This is exciting. Yeah. Well, no, you know, it's so funny because when we first met, we were talking all about Yucca Mountain and your history and everything. I had no idea how many topics of nuclear you are an expert in because when you reached out to me about this COVID <laughs> treatment, I was like, whoa, this guy knows his stuff. Oh, good. Thanks. Actually, I have had a, I've had a bizarre career. I mean, I, I started out as a planetary scientist and exobiologist, life of the planets. I actually redid Yuri Miller experiments and things like that. It was quite, quite amazing. So, yeah, so going from NASA to the nuclear is interesting, but uh, they're both outside the box thinking. So it actually was kind of interesting. Yeah. So let's get into it. I mean, obviously, OK, COVID-19, you know, top, pressing issue right now. Yeah. Here yeah. we are. And, you know, one of the things he told me was, you know, radiation, low dose radiation could have these beneficial, you know, properties. Just tell me, yeah. how, how did this come about? What's the high level? And then we'll get into all the details. OK, the high level is it's actually, uh, although unintentional, it's criminal negligent homicide not to use this because 300,000 of the 400,000 people who have died in the United States did not need to die, period. All they had to do was when they were admitted to the hospital, they needed to just you know, run, you know, roll them down to radiology for 15 minutes, give them a half a grade dose to each lung, put them up in their bed, There's the cytokine storm, the viral pneumonia would have reversed in 24 hours and they'd have been discharged in three days. And okay, so what's happening here? We're using existing equipment essentially, right? Because hospitals yep. are already equipped to you know, shoot oh, x-rays yeah. at us. Yep. And then, no. and, and you're yep. blasted at the lungs. So it's locally targeted. You're not affecting the rest yep. of the body. And, and it's a, a hundred times less dose than we use for cancer. I mean, so this is this is insane. This is low dose. Right. Okay. We do this all the time. And so we know radiation saves lives, right? We use it right. for imaging. We use it for cancer treatment. You're saying this is a hundred times lower and knocks back the COVID. What's actually happening though? So it's going into the uh, lungs. What's it hitting? Good, good point. It's not actually treating the virus itself. It's not killing the virus, okay? Because again, these are low doses. Um, so, so the whole idea is that what, what COVID does in general, why it kills you, is it makes your immune system go wacko, okay? So that's why not everyone dies. I mean, it, you know, you know, you get infected, you, you, you're you talking about people who are, are non-symptomatic. That just means that their immune system can handle it. That's fine. Uh, now, there may be long-term uh, of cardiovascular effects, things like that. But in general, you know, your, your immune system can handle it if given time. Unfortunately, there are some people whose immune systems go wacko, okay? And they, 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 there are certain immune cells. In fact, there, there are many immune cells, you know, within the body, dozens of different types, you know, T cells, killer T cells, you know, macrophages, all that kind of stuff. And what happens is that when they go wacko, they start to pro be pro-inflammatory. Okay, okay, inflammation. So they, yeah. Inflammation. That is the body right. over all about reacting to something. Is that like? Yes. Am I wrong in saying it's kind of like an allergic reaction, where it's your body trying to, you know, overreact to a, to something that got into your system, or is it something totally um, different? Sort of. Sort of. I mean, in it, it, it it's it's not a chemical in you know, reaction like like most al allergies are. It, it's a biochemical response. Um, a lot of you know. In inflammation is one of those things that is really harmful in the long term. Okay, uh, osteoarthritis gives you in, in, in inflammation, joint pain, stuff like that. Um, but it actually has a a particular role. Okay, 
in in bringing fluids to that area and that usually you know knocks things out and it you know it's fine but if there's too much inflammation it's not good and how yeah. come some people are over yeah why is it that somebody is uh overreact i guess to some sort of foreign right. agent and and some like do the right amount of acting right right um probably because their immune systems are compromised in some way um so in fact that has been one of the things that that, that has popped up over and over again is that if you have comorbidities or other issues like diabetes or heart disease then then your immune system just is not in tip-top shape and it just does not respond well but but actually you know biochemically why i'm, I'm who knows okay and so, um, so what are these cytokines yeah. i hear about cytokines all the time i have no idea what a cytokine is that's a good point <laughs> um let me see a, a cytokine let me actually read it correctly uh, cytokines are specialized small regulatory proteins. They're not cells, they're just proteins that, that pretty much signal cells to do something. So what happens is that, you know, you know if something invades you and, uh, you know, the immune system sends out the cytokines and they tell the T cells to attack, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, and unfortunately, if you send out too many, again, you get this overreaction. And where, where um, and it's called a cytokine come, storm. Where does the cytokine come from? Does it come from within any, any given cell? Does it come from the pancreas? Like where do they originate these cytokines? Um, it, it comes from the lymph system. And so again, although I, I know a lot about this, I am not the expert on this. Jim Wells can tell you exactly what's going on. Um, and so but but again, you're you're flooding the system, especially the lungs, with these cytokine storm and that tells everyone to go insane and it starts inflaming and so your lungs fill up with water by definition that's pneumonia okay so this is this is a special case of something called viral pneumonia as opposed to bacterial pneumonia and viral pneumonia you know isn't that common although it, it occurs uh, but about you know 70 to 80 years ago uh, people who were just you know, starting out in radiation and radiotherapy realized that viral pneumonia, which was resistant to everything else, um, could be treated with, with radiation. We've been doing this for 80 years. Okay, okay. so tell this me about- This is that. not new. What was the, when was the first time that radiation was used to treat pneumonia? I think 1939. Okay. okay, that's like, yeah, that's like before we had like real technology. <laughs> yeah, ab absolutely. It's, it's, and it was 80% effective. Oppenheimer, Oppenheimer used this. Okay. Robert Oppenheimer. Uh, this yeah, time. Robert Oppenheimer, our, our favorite nuclear you know, bomb maker. <laughs> so he actually did this and, and, and others did too. And Jerry Cutler, um, um, I think it was Jerry Cutler. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, he, um, he actually did a study looking at all these old trials and all these old uses and it was 80% effective then. So how come, okay. how come it fell out? And yeah, that's before we had proper instrumentation and could in right. fact, yeah. shooting with x-rays. How come this fell out of favor if it's so effective? Um, let me just throw one word out there that everyone knows. LNT. Linear LNT. Low threshold. Threshold Our dose arch hypothesis. nemesis. Uh, yes. It was, of course, it's wrong. And, and you know, people don't know that because they don't understand this. We got to take two steps yeah. back to explain to what the audience LNT is. Our nuclear audience knows this, but we're going to get a lot of people that are just interested in the COVID stuff. So good, good. Through what so, is. so about in, in, in about 1940, okay, we had pretty much figured out a lot of the effects of radiation. I mean, you know, we did a lot of bad things in the 20s, you know, the, 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 the uh, uh, radium dial women and that kind of thing. But uh, we, we figured out how to do things and how to keep safe from them. Um, in fact, all of our nuclear protocols right now that we use at Hanford site and at nuclear power reactors and radiochemistry laboratories was developed by Herbert M. Parker, of which I am a trustee. Okay, he developed those in 1943. They're still what we use. Okay, we, we, this is nothing really new here. Yeah. Um, and we realized that about 20 rem, you know, either acute or, or, or chronic, um, below that, there really wasn't any measurable effect. I mean, the effects were so low that, that you can't even see them in the general po population. What you're saying we figured out was the dosing, like the dose and right. response of the human body, right. what we could handle, right. what's a big deal, what's not a big deal. Right. Like if right. I, if right. I like, you know, hit my fist into my hand like this, I didn't do any permanent damage, but I, I, right. I had impact. I had a dose, but it's low. Right. So it doesn't matter. But if I were to really punch it, I might bruise myself. And that's a point right. where you actually have an effect. Right. 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 And, and a, a, another good example is aspirin. 
okay? Um, and something called a cumulative dose effect, okay? So, so that's, that's all in there. If you take one aspirin a day for 100 days, yeah. you're not gonna be harmed. Yeah. But if you take 100 aspirin in one day, yeah. you're gonna be harmed, yeah. okay? And so, but about the, you know, in, in the late 40s and early 50s when the Cold War got started, okay, there was this push to stop a broad, broad ground nuclear testing. There was this, this push to, to deal with weapons. And um, Hermann Mueller and a few other people came up with something called the linear no threshold dose hypothesis, meaning that it doesn't matter the amount of radiation, all radiation is gonna kill you, yeah. which is insane. Yeah, it doesn't okay, make any sense. And, and take it back to our analogy. That means that what these guys were now saying was that if a hundred people just take one aspirin a day, one of them's going to die, and we know right, it's not true. right. The risk, the risk is the same. Right, right, and, and that's an, yeah, that's stupid. It makes okay. no sense. But that is the metric by which the radiation protection industry has established over the right. last you know five decades and holds us accountable to, which restricts right. the use of low amounts of radiation to, right. for, for positive use cases because they're saying even if it's low, someone's going to die. Right, absolutely, that there's always a risk. Yes, there's always a risk. I mean, there's a risk of a meteorite hitting you, but you don't worry about that day to day, okay? So, so the risk of, okay, so un unfortunately the medical community generally doesn't know a lot of this, okay? They just use protocols, they use procedures, this is what you do, blah, blah, blah. Then they don't think outside the box in that regard, yeah. okay? So um, yes, we use 100 times these doses to treat cancer, but you're treating cancer. So if you don't have cancer, then you can't use it, according to a lot of people. So, so even, you know, radiologists even, you know, you, you have to be a researcher. As, as you know, if you're a researcher, is different than just people doing things. Um, so if you're just an ordinary MD, that's fine. And I've talked to many of them and they're, they're interested, but they would never do it <laughs> because and they would never step outside the protocols. Aren't doctors allowed to prescribe things off label, like quote unquote, like aren't they allowed to like make their own decisions about what treatments for their patients Yes, yes. And if it's and not, in fact, quote, FDA it, approved, you know? Absolutely. In 2018, Congress passed an act called the Right to Act yeah. um, legislation. So, yeah, if so, if all else fails and you're dying, yeah. uh, sure, why can't I try this? Yeah. And, and they use that for, you know, hydrochloroquine, which is insanely stupid. Yeah. Um, and even, you know, remdesivir doesn't work very well about 20% of the time. So, but, but if it's a drug, see, people like drugs, yeah. okay? They, they think drugs are great, but radiation, ooh, don't even touch that. Magic so, pills, yeah, give me some magic right. pills, yeah. Absolutely, so, so the, the thing about, you know, so right now we're trying to do trials in this, which is insane because we've been doing this for 80 years, we've done the trials, okay? Mm -hmm. But they say, oh, well, it's not COVID, but it's not treating COVID. That it doesn't matter what the virus is. And how come there aren't like emergency exceptions that can be, I mean, like this is an issue that has the world's attention. The, the, like the global economy has seized up. If we had an effective right. treatment, it would at least dampen the impact on hospitals. And, and Oh yes, the hospitalization to... rate would drop like 80%. <laughs> so, okay, so what's the holdup? <laughs> Fear, just fear of radiation. Yeah. In fact, what's even weirder is that, uh, you know, doctors, yes, they can, they can step outside the box, but they're always worried about being sued, right? You know, everyone's worried about being sued. Yeah. Um, and, and I said, well, I'll sign whatever you want to sign. I mean, I'll, you know, whatever, I'd keep you, you know, free of any, any charges. Just, you know, don't let me die because because you're afraid, because you're afraid of radiation. Now, uh, the problem is patients are afraid of it too. Okay. So, yeah. So, so there's, there's some of my colleagues are trying to do trials, and there's been a very small, you know, numbers like a trial of ten people here and ten people there, um, but they they have trouble getting people to sign up for a trial, even though they're dying of COVID. I mean, this is it's like wait a second. At this point, you have a 50-50 chance of dying of COVID, and the radiation we want to give you is less less risky than crossing the street on yes. foot. Okay less risky than crossing the street, but you're not gonna do that because you're afraid of radiation. This is how insane the, the idea of radiation has become. And, okay, so what's the type of doctor that would normally administer a radiation treatment? Radiation oncologist. Radiation oncologist. Okay, so that's right. a cancer well, doctor. Right, it's a cancer doctor. And they should know something about, you know, the, the risk trade-offs, right? Because they're making that every day, you know, they're saying, okay, you have cancer, right. let's get, blast you with some radiation. 
Um, right. They can't like, there, is there, is there like a forum of these guys that you know, we could go to and we could like say, Hey, it's been used to treat pneumonia since the 1940s. Like. <laughs> well, see that the, the problem is even many of them are not researchers. I mean, I, again, the, the people I'm working with like Jim Welsh and, and others, I mean, they're researchers, they know this, Yeah. Uh, but even they couldn't get permission from their institutions to do trials. I mean, that this is like, you know, you can't do trials without, you know, permission per, per se. But, you know, so the idea that even even they couldn't get permission is rather, rather insane. So, OK, but we do have a couple small trials going on, at least. Right. Right. So what are the results of those so far? Do we have any data coming in about 90 percent effective? So what you do is you bring them in for a, a 15 minute what is it? A fifty-minute right. blast? Can you give me some numbers? What? Oh, it, 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 it's 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 from from rolling them down and rolling them back is about fifteen minutes. I mean, the, the, okay, the not actual... even fifteen minutes of radiation. The whole thing. No, the, yeah, the whole thing. I mean, it's it's one moment. I mean, you're talking about you know basically less than a second. Oh, it's like when you go to the dentist and they go behind the thing and they press the button. Yeah, and they go boom, and that's it. And that could be ninety percent effective. I mean, you could imagine yeah. a hospital being able to handle unlimited capacity that way. You could oh, yeah. I, I mean, of, this uh, is a whole assembly line of people going in blast roll them out roll them in blast roll them out this is why I, it's 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 horrible and and it's really i mean i i just want to cry because these poor people do not have to die okay now now let me back up a bit yeah. um because you're treating the, infl the the inflammatory response you have to wait till you get the inflammatory response yes okay you can't you, you know someone just tests positive you go do this not gonna do anything okay yeah when when you have to go on oxygen or when you look like you're going to need a ventilator that means you know things have started and so that means your you know t4 cells have gone wacko and they start telling the t8 cells to to to, to keep you know producing inflammatory you know in pro -infl inflammation then you hit it with a half a gray dose just to the lungs and that reverses the pro-inflammatory and makes them anti-inflammatory because a bunch of these cells work together and it's really incredibly complex. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, you're, you're, you're like resetting, you know, the stage with this and then they kind of calm down and the T4 cells actually become anti-inflammatory like they should yeah. and all that kind of thing. So uh, again, that's, but if you wait too long and there's too much lung damage, does it work? In fact, the uh, the the ninety percent effective was ninety percent because the ten percent were too far gone. Okay, okay so, so we have a good. Um, is there a good way of measuring like what is the right timing for this? Like by some sort of like practical like physical response? Is it when people are having trouble breathing? Is like is that when you want yes. them in? It's 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 when you get viral pneumonia. So yeah. when fluid starts entering the lungs. And, and how do in, doctors in know that? How do they measure the flu? Do they have to jab something in you or do they shove a tube down your throat? Like, what are they doing to figure that out? No, they, they, they probably, I mean, they, they usually just listen. And if they can hear bubbling, okay. <laughs> you know, you know, that's why they put the stethoscope in the, on your back. At, at Not your even intrusive. They, a, a trained doctor yeah. with a, with a stethoscope can say you are in Should, this range where if we right. gave you this, you know, one second blast, half a gray dose, it's going to essentially hit the reset button on your immune system. Right. And, right. and so let's talk about this reset analogy for a second. So it's like, okay, so your body's overreacting. All these complex things are happening. It's going haywire. This is almost be like if your computer seized up and stopped working, you turn it on, you turn it off. All of a sudden you're like back in steady state operation again. Right. Basically. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So. Um, all right. So we've got some you know, real world cases, the 90% um, efficacy rate. Have papers been published? Like, is this in medical journals? Yes, yes, it has. And, and in fact, um, I, I might have sent you a couple of Forbes articles that yeah. have links to those. Yeah, so that's good. And, and again, the, 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 best, the best technical paper was written by, by Jim Welsh and company. Okay, um, and we're going to be Wilson talking to Jim Welsh next. Right. So excellent. That, that's perfect, because he, he is, he's, he's the one who knows. What, what, I, what I bring to this is kind of the outrage of, of, a, of a lifelong, of a career, 35 career, 35 year career dealing with low level nonsense. Yeah. Okay. The fact that people are so afraid, you know, of nuclear waste stuff at that. I mean, here, come on, nuclear waste is so trivial compared to COVID. It's like, this is, you know, okay. I, you know, I've been dealing with this and, uh, and I understand that, but the people, you know, the numbers of people who die each year from the fear of radiation is on the order of dozens, hundreds. I mean, Fukushima was 1600. Um, but now we're talking about, you know, millions. I mean, uh, worldwide, there are millions okay, of people. I, I, I want to be very precise with our language. The yes. numbers you're referring to were the ones who died of 
fear of radiation, not fear of radiation. of radiation, not of radiation, right? Fear of radiation, right? Because like no, because they either they acted in a way that led to their early demise, or they didn't right. act in a way that could have saved them. Right, right. So a lot of people will not get CT scans of your brain and stuff like that because you're afraid of it, which is even worse because your brain is highly, highly resistant to radiation. That's why radiation doesn't work against brain tumors. You know, those horrible, aggressive brain tumors that kill you in a year um, that, you know, Ted Kennedy died of and things like that, you know, then Bo Biden. So, you know, it doesn't work. It, it doesn't hurt you. It, it, and it doesn't hurt, hurt uh, uh, cancer is in your brain. So the idea that you're not going to get a CT scan to see if there's something wrong, something actual elsewhere wrong, and that because of that, you're going to die because you're afraid of, you know, incredibly low levels of radiation yeah. is insane. I mean, it, it's like, you know, it's like getting a, a chest x-ray in that regard. It's like people don't really not get a chest x-ray in general because it's in the culture. It's okay to get a chest X-ray. Yeah, yeah. Okay, everybody, you know, you know, it's okay to get, you know, a, dental a, X-rays. Yeah, yeah, a dental X-ray because everyone's been doing it forever. So it's all, you know, it's a cultural thing, and and this is horrible. Is there um is there a chance? Okay, so we just <laughs> we have a new president. We just switched right. over the administration. That means there's new people in charge of assessing all of the you know, solutions, is it possible that this treatment might now get a second look? Like, you know, Biden might tell his team, like, I don't care what they looked at before. Now's a chance to reassess everything that we've ever done. We got to get this right. This is my chance to shine and show like leadership. Is there a chance that his new Corona task team will surface this as a potential treatment? I wish. I've been trying to contact them. I wish. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they, they kind of, you know, it takes some a champion. A champion who's who has some real yeah. clout, yeah. Um, and you know, and who am I? I'm just a scientist. It doesn't make any difference. So, <laughs> and you know, so so that that's a problem. And, well, maybe, and maybe um, we can help. Is are there champions that you like have have like come across? I mean, probably can't get in touch with Fauci. That's the only other name I know in the space. Are there right, other like right. real respected senior government leader type people that if we got them this evidence that we could use our audience to? Well, I, I, I even tried to you know, contact uh, Jim Clyburn's uh, office because he's actually the chair of the subcommittee on the coronavirus crisis. And, and you'd figure I'd get some, some response to that. So, but you know, it's also, it's hard to contact the people directly. It only, always goes to their staff yeah. or their, their people. <laughs> and, and those people have to decide whether it's worthwhile to bring up. And of course, all you have to do is see the word radiation and just throw it away. So that's, that's one of the issues. Uh, again, this, this this fear of radiation is so pervasive in this society. I mean, I, I keep seeing commercials for like insurance that have that, that mention radiation as a bad. It's like, what is that doing in a car commercial, a car insurance commercial? Yeah. This is insane. So, so it's it's just one of those things that has become a negative, um, a negative image. So just say the word radiation or nuclear and suddenly mushroom clouds appear in your brain and, and it's hard to get by that. You know, oh God, I, I, you just have my brain going right now because it's almost like we could use this as an opportunity to kind of like re-educate the world, uh, you know, rebrand, re right? What if we could yeah. use this to rebrand well, radiation? I, and, and I've, I've actually talked to the nuclear industry and you know folks i said okay listen this is this is where you can you know radiation can come and save the day nuclear can come and save the day better than anything else and um and what about the iaea right they're they're always pushing hey medical nuclear they're trying to rebrand themselves could we call up you know grossi right. at the iaea and say hey use your un connections to get us in in the who yeah yeah absolutely that that would be great yeah and and but i want to back up a little bit too because the first thing they'll do oh we need year-long trials and it's like, well, this isn't a new drug. Okay, we don't need a trial. We've been doing this for 80 years. We know exactly what it is. No new PPE, no new equipment, no new training, no new anything. Yep. There's absolutely nothing new about this. And uh, the fact that COVID causes viral pneumonia, like a lot of other viruses do, that, that's okay. I mean, you, you know, you don't, you know, this isn't treating the virus. Yep. And so that, that's what's, what's, the, what's key. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's really important that we don't have to get anything new approved. It's the same equipment. It's the same process. It's the same right. doctors. It's the same technicians. It's the same nurses. All, all yeah. you have to do is say, you know, let's enable. I mean, it's, it's funny because like they used 
ventil. I, I remember reading about the whole ventilator shortage, right? And they were all of a sudden right. they were like, well, you know, we can repurpose the ventilators from our anesthesiologists, to, you know, because they've got ventilator style equipment. So they are right. clearly the hospitals are capable of saying, let's use equipment from one department that maybe wouldn't have been used for this, and let's you know right. repart, you know, reorganize. Let's let's get this equipment into this other department because hey, we need it. So it right. seems like there is right. precedence for, for not just using drugs off label, but for using equipment off label. Oh yeah, yeah. I, 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 this is, I mean, I. It's so simplistically horrible <laughs> that this simply comes down to LNT and fear, and that we've just bred, you know, three generations of fear about radiation, um, and and the you know the consequences are large now. They've never been this large, right? I mean, you know, okay, 16 people, 1600 people died at Fukushima because they evacuated them when they didn't need to. Uh, and they forced evacuated them quickly. And these people were on ventilators and other things and they died during the evacuation and they never would have gotten more than a rent. So, uh, so, you know, but now we're talking about, yeah, hundreds of thousands to millions of people that don't have to die. Hundreds of thousands just in the US. Yeah, yeah. I, what I'm really worried about, so like, okay, so we've got a vaccine, we're like, hooray, we pat ourselves in the back, warp speed faster than ever. But like, we can right. even see, we, we're not getting the vaccine out to the whole world. I mean, right, I, right. people are still gonna be waiting in the US for six months. Oh yeah. I know, yeah. you know, I know some of these poorer countries are not, you know, they're, they're, they're at the back of the line right, when it comes right. to getting this stuff. So yeah. it seems like, it seems like we're not just talking about like the 300,000 that have died here. We're not just talking about, you know, maybe another, you know, a couple hundred thousand before we all get it here. We're talking about like right. 5 million, 10 million people worldwide could benefit. Right. From this. Right. And not just that, but the fire, you know, the, the vaccine is only 90% effective. <laughs> okay. So again, you're going to have 10% of the population that's not going to be protected. You need a treatment. Yes. And so, so how yeah. come maybe we can get a little bit more into the technical weeds just for a second. I've got a couple questions. So like what the radiation does is it combats the inflammation. Don't we have other things that combat inflammation and how come those haven't been so effective? Um, yeah. So they're anti-inflammatories and that's one of the treatments that we do give now. And that's why the survival rate has gotten better. Okay. But again, chemical anti-inflammatories are different than radiation. And so, you know, radiation gets everywhere. It gets everything. Um, and um, uh, I don't really know why chemical anti-inflammatory uh, would work one case, not work the other, why it would work better or worse than radiation. I, I don't know enough, enough about anti-inflammatories, but there are many types of anti-inflammatories. I mean, there's steroids, there's non-steroidals. I mean, aspirin's an anti-inflammatory, um, as is Tylenol and, and Advil and everything else. So again, they all work differently anyway, right? Yeah. And why do they work differently or how do they work differently? So, so this is just another, you know, it's just a really good tool in the arsenal that, that if you don't look at it and let people die, I mean, it's just, it's just insane. Um, but again, if you ask a patient whether they want to go to radiology and get a blast of radiation, they might say no. And it's like, but you're going to die. Or, or your, your risk is really high for dying here. And the risk from the radiation is not even measurable. Yeah. So that's, that's one of the issues. So maybe we could then take a second and talk about like, even like, what is radiation? Because like, you know, I, as you know, a researcher, you can imagine radiation. It's like a, it's like a wave. It's like a light wave, but in a different frequency, right. you know, how, how can we explain this to the common person? You know, like, what is this invisible thing that, you know, that has these right. effects? Right. Well, all radiation does is it actually acts like oxygen. It, it's an oxidizer, okay, which means it removes an electron. So oxygen is very, very toxic to cells. You, you know that it's one of the most toxic things to cells you can have. Yet we live, we live in an oxygen atmosphere, okay? Because cells learned about two and a half billion years ago when oxygen first came into the atmosphere, because of photosynthetic bacteria, and so so oxygen came up and it did kill a lot of things actually, um, and then and then the eukaryotic cell formed, which was a a physical symbiosis between bacteria, larger single cell organisms, spirochetes, and they got together and made a big cell with a lot of 
possibilities, <laughs> okay? And that's what all life is now, all multicellular life are, is, is based on the anicarotic cell. And part of that was the mitochondria, which used to be the old sur purple sulfur bacteria that could handle oxygen, Yeah. okay? And so that's fine. However, if, if oxygen is not handled correctly in a cell, it'll simply destroy the cell because it steals electrons off of things, okay? And that changes the charge, that changes the, the, the chemistry. So what radiation does the same thing. It comes in and it knocks an electron off. That's all it does, right? And it's mainly, it's usually off of a hydrogen, right? Because we're mainly water. So, so it, it, it knocks that off and that electron then knocks off another electron and you get a cascade, okay? And different types of radiation cause slightly different cascades. Um, so alpha, beta, gamma, but gamma just, just hits one and it, and it cascades out and then, then it's gone, okay? Now, the change in the biochemistry of a macrophage, you know, immune cell uh, is such that that is an important change and that's what's going on. That's, that's, that's all that's going on. Um, and so exactly how the macrophage changes and becomes um, anti-inflammatory from pro-inflammatory, I'm not quite sure. And, um, and just to kind of help visualize like what oxygen is and what it does like rust rust on metal that's like right, a, right. it's like oxygen like attacking something right yes and it, it, it's oxygen stealing an electron off of the iron yeah okay so we and know what plus oxygen two plus can do and then what you're right. saying was two and a half billion years ago instead of the oxygen being purely toxic and just destroying things like rusting metal right. our bodies adapted and figured out how we could utilize that you know that attacking force of oxygen to become almost like an energy a component of energy. Right. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We got we got almost forty times the amount of energy out of out, out of a sugar molecule using oxygen than not. Okay. And then and, and this this is just a single cell. So this is eukaryotic cell. It took another billion years to come up with multicellular or organisms. And then eventually to us. Okay. Um, so yeah. then let's rewind again a little bit. So tell me again how um, the radiation you know, works like the oxygen. It, it, you're saying the, the wave comes in, the, 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 the X-ray wave right. come, comes into the body. Right. And it, right. it, 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 knocks, it off. knocks an electron off of a molecule, most, mostly hydrogen, uh, sometimes carbon. And then does that essentially, when it does that, does that allow then the oxygen to release or is oxygen not part of the equation at this point? Oxygen is not part of this equation. Right? I see. It right. just it just tricks the body into thinking that something oxygen-like has happened. No, no. I, I I'm, I'm sorry. Um, I, I I was the, the the oxygen analogy is simply an analogy to radiation. Okay. I see. Okay. Um, oxygen is not involved in this particular treatment of COVID. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. So but 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 people don't realize that oxygen is much more dangerous than radiation. Yeah. And you're you're. You know, and also when this came about two and a half billion years ago, there was about 10 times background radiation as there is now. So we came up with mechanisms to repair radiation damage that were really quite efficient. That's why it takes a lot of radiation to hurt you yeah. because our cells, our immune system can handle it really well. Okay, so, so, yeah. Yeah. so then, okay, so the radiation comes into the body, uh, knocks off an electron and that tells the macrophage, which is part of our immune system to do something differently than it's been doing before. Right. Right. And that's the whole key here is we've yeah, essentially right. sent a new signal. It's almost like we're communicating with our immune system. <laughs> that, that's a good, that, that, yeah, that, that, that's, that's a good analogy. Yep. Yep. And, and it's, you know, we've seen um, the anti-inflammatory effects of radiation a lot. I mean, the Germans have used this to treat, you know, in, in, you know, uh, joint inflammation and things like that. I mean, anything that, you know, it, it's actually uh, looks to be useful in Alzheimer's disease, which, which is an inflammatory issue. So again, anything that involves runaway inflammation in the body, this is probably a good thing. Yep. But right now, it certainly is a good thing for COVID. I mean, it's, and, and the idea that you're, you're going to wait years to do trials, uh, it's just, it, it's, it's sad. It's yeah. very sad. Yeah. Um, okay. Anything else that we should know about, you know, uh, how, how, if we could play this out, like if, if we got in touch with the right people, if they understood the value, how would it play out from there? What, what do you think that they would do? Would they roll it out in some hospitals first? Would it be well, yeah, I mean, it, the, the only, the reason you would do trials, let me back up a little bit, is to find out the exact best, least dose that would work, right? 
So instead of a half a gray, I mean, half a gray works. One gray works. In fact, the first trial had 1.5 gray, which is still, I mean, you know, still very low, but, but you know, it was three times what, what actually works. You could get away with perhaps 0.3 gray, you know, but who cares, <laughs> okay? All of those dose ranges um, are, are, are trivial in terms of the, the effect of COVID. So again, all of those, we've never seen any real effect, any adverse health, health effects from those targeted doses to the lungs, okay? And again, we use 100 times that uh, to treat cancer. So, uh, in, in, and that gets back to, well, why do people use radiation for cancer? Why aren't they afraid of it? Because they're afraid of cancer, <laughs> okay? More, okay? So now it's like COVID, wait a second, you need to be more afraid of COVID yeah. than you are of this dose of radiation. Yeah, especially if your lungs are filling up with water. <laughs> yeah, I, it, it's, it's, it's rather, rather strange. So, um, so that's what we have to get over, is that you have to be more afraid of dying from COVID than you are of dying from low levels of radiation. And, and the work being done right now, this is like an international effort, right? This isn't just right. the studies that are that are being conducted. Where are some of the places that they're being conducted? Uh, Iran, Israel, um, I'm not sure where, in Spain and, and Italy. Okay. And the doctors who have like taken this on, they just have a more, I guess, like progressive, you know, outlook or there's- just... No, they're, they're struggling with the same thing. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, they're absolutely struggling with the same thing. So, yeah, it sounds to me like, yeah, we need a big communications push. We need to open up some people's eyes. We need to like make them, you know, at least at the policy level and then make it more accepted to start implementing this. Yeah. And then I yeah. bet like once some hospitals start doing it, like, you know, name brand, big hospitals. Right. I feel like the learning is happening faster than ever, like hospitals sharing good learnings across the COVID more than anything else, just because there's so much attention on it. Right, and but this is weird. Here we had this little trial at at uh, Emory Univer Emory Medical Center at Emory U University, and uh, and you know it's only ten patients, but hell, it was ninety percent effective. I mean, you know, and uh, but that wasn't enough. I mean, you could see the the administration, you know, the administrative aspect of the scientific community just push back. Oh my God, that was not enough. It, was, it wasn't a big enough trial. Okay, so it was just a fluke. You mean ninety percent effect was just a fluke? Um, okay, so what do you want? We want a big trial, bigger trials going on a year. Uh, it's like, why do you want? I mean, the again, this the fact that the LNT is an administrative, you know, the no threshold dose deposit was an administrative thing. Okay, it was a bureaucratic thing. It was not a scientific thing. Mm -hmm. And so when you start doing, start trying to push this, you get the huge, huge bureaucratic pushback that is amazing yeah. and and uh, you know science doesn't work that great against bureaucracy it's really hard yeah no it's tricky i mean i've looked into this a little bit um and you know whenever like one of the big radiation um agencies take it on like the icrp um right. they'll like they'll establish a committee they'll say look into this the committee will be right. like yeah there's no low dose effects and then at the very top levels they'll say okay well better safe than sorry let's just say right that's, we'll assume the LNT. <laughs> right. That's exactly what they've done for, for 50 years. But it, but you can kind of see why that is. It's like a super misalignment of incentives. If like we had the, you know, if they were to essentially establish the position that low dose radiation is no big deal, then all of their jobs would be at risk. I mean, you're talking thousands of professionals whose only job is to like, quote unquote, protect us from minor amounts of radiation or the people who are setting the standards for radiation. So it's all right. in their right. incentive to say, better safe than sorry, let's, you know, let's keep these standards. Yes, and, and I've, I've, I've thought about that. I've, I've heard about that. I, I, I mean, I'm not yet, I'm getting there, but I'm not yet that cynical. <laughs> okay. well, I don't, I don't, in, in, I don't in, think that they're doing it on purpose. It's like, no, no, no. I, yeah. Quote, and, and, it's like, you can't pay a man to understand something or you can't get a man to understand something is right. Not, you know, there's like a quote. Of right. Right. No, no, I, 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 exactly. And, but I don't think it actually would kill many jobs because again, you still need to monitor, you know, um, whatever limit you put in, you still need to monitor that limit. Yeah. And so, you know, I, I don't think that would do much. I think it's simply a cultural, yeah. an administrative bureaucratic culture that does not want to say we've been wrong for 60 years. Yeah. Um, and, you know, even that, it's like, so what? 
Who cares? Oh, we were wrong for 60 years. We were wrong for a thousand years on other things and certain things. Okay. Okay. So now we know. So get over it and get on with this and save lives. Yeah, but that's um, coming from a guy like you who's got like a low ego. The big ego people right. don't think like that. <laughs> yeah, they don't think like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Uh, yeah, so we'll we'll see. I mean, again, this is such a compared to this kind of stuff and what's going on right now in America, I'll tell you, nuclear waste just seems so trivial. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Okay, well, we're going to do our best over here to kind of bring some attention to this issue. We're going to interview a few more of your colleagues. Thank you so much for good, recommending good. them. And, you know, I'll use some of my political connections as well to at least maybe get, you know, a voice at the table. You know, yep, yep, can happen. yep. Good, good. All right. Thank well, you so much. Yeah, thanks, Jim. Talk to you soon. Thanks, bye. And initiate at least a new approach to the many difficult problems that must be solved in both private and public conversation. If the world is to take off the inertia imposed by fear and is to make positive progress toward peace.